Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Tech. I hope I can finally get this right. I've been trying to record this CRT in action for a little while today. Uh, let me go through a little bit what I'm doing in today's episode. So I've been getting some requests to see some of the CRTs actually in action and I thought well that's a great idea and why not start with this Sony, or I mean not Sony, excuse me, this JVC D series uh, 36 inch big boy that is a model from the year 2000 and it has just about every analog input you could put into it. It does not have RGB SCART, but it does have component. And that's what I'm using today. I'm using my SNES, SNES, uh, Mini or Junior. And this one does have the 7374 amp installed in it today. Uh, it, well, it was installed today, but it installed a long time ago. And that's what I'm using for my um, conversion. It's converting that RGB uh, signal to component. And then that's what's being fed to the TV, and it gives it a nice scan line effect and really sharp picture, and it's just as good as RGB would be on this television. So uh, today I figured I'd go with a Capcom theme, and we're going to start with a couple of Capcom games, and the first one's going to be Demon Crest, and these were suggested to me uh, in the last video, and I will um, show you. Let's just go ahead and get into some of these games. So. As I'm going through this, I'm going to change up my view. All right, Demon's Crest. So as I'm adjusting the camera here, let's get set up to try to play some of this. I want you to hopefully see how good this looks on this television, just running through again component. This is this is the RGB converted to component. Uh, I'll talk you through this a little bit. I don't see any reason if your TV already gets component to, to convert it to RGB. So let's get in here. We'll just go ahead and start. Play the first level or so. Uh, this is really a great game. It shows a lot of good colors and, and uh, action here. This is back when Capcom used to be one of the top video game for developers. Production companies. So... Obviously, I'm playing this through a ROM, through my SD to SNES, and um, some things to note about this is uh, where well, there's been a lot of news about ROMs, thanks to Nintendo lately. They've sent some serious letters and threats to some of the ROM sites in the community as well as you know sued them now and if it's caused other sites like emu paradise to sh get shut down and i realized that they did somehow make a secondary money profit off of oh whether it was through advertisers or whatever they did make some money off of nintendo's intellectual property which i can understand them having a problem with but on the flip side of that, you got to understand like what we're trying to do. We want to play retro video games on the original systems, and we don't want to go paying thousands or hundreds of dollars to pay, play one game that might be rare. So, Or even if you own the game, you don't want to damage your game copy by uh, playing it or scratching it or you know putting it in and out of a machine. So that's where Nintendo comes off as a bad guy. See, I would have respected this plan if they would have had something set up where you could go ahead and buy the ROM packs. I mean, why don't they just sell us the ROM packs? Think about that. If, they, if Nintendo themselves sold ROM packs for hardware like this or for uh, you know emulation programs, if they sold them themselves and offered them and they were free of uh, viruses, it would be just like when Napster was around and the whole mp3 thing got settled because people eventually you know eventually if you want people to stop just make them have viruses in them and people will stop downloading your stuff so uh, but but anyway Nintendo looks like a bad guy here because they went and took the whole legal route and the only one they're really hurting is their fans because I mean big deal if the ROM sites go out of business I guess right who cares I mean they weren't really doing anything but that hurts us if there's no way for us to get good quality ROMs. So I'm, I'm really kind of frustrated with the way Nintendo's handled that whole thing. I hope maybe that they could take a, le a second and think about how they could have done that the right way. And rather than turning something into bad press, what they could have done was turn it into a very good press and good service by coming out with something to sell these ROMs and offer them to the marketplace 
and, uh, and say, look, if anybody else is selling our ROMs, you're going to stop. And everybody would understand. It would make complete sense. But when you just tell people to stop doing something because you're not make, you are not smart enough to figure out a way to make money off of it, or you're just too lazy and don't care about the product and don't want to you know, support people who, who do a lot to play old systems that have been obsolete for a long time that are retro, I get it. I, I mean, I understand that, but it's a bad decision, okay? It's a bad business decision. And it happens. Big businesses make bad business decisions all the time. So, um, anyway, I hated to get, you know, while we're playing, it's no big deal to get off on a rant about Nintendo and what they've been doing wrong in the wrong community. So, uh, if you have any opinion on it, you know, leave it in here. Let's, let's, you know, let's let them know how we feel. Um, this is a very cool game. I mean, but, man, just like, there we go. There we go. So, let's go see if we can beat this guy up. I've had some trouble trying to get this thing nailed down. I've been changing my shutter speeds on my camera and um, also trying to change the angle as well as the brightness because it's, it doesn't look the same as it does in the naked eye. Uh, but it looks great. You know, if you like to play these old games, nothing's better than this. If you just did, for example, what I've done now, uh, let's not say, you know, you could get, you could get the TV for 30 bucks, that's about how much this one was. 30 bucks, 50 bucks maybe, for a really high end, top of the line, uh, large CRT. And, and again, this one has the, the right aspect ratio, and it also has the curved screen, so that's important. But, you know, you get one of these, and you get the component cables for 50 bucks, okay? But I wouldn't even recommend that, because the component cables are great. They're great performing products, but they're expensive. And it's only good for like one kind of system pretty much, and then you have to switch them back and forth. I think that the best idea is to go from SCART to component, RGB to component with a converter. Uh, there's a nice converter on eBay that's about 80 bucks shipped. I'll put a link to it in my, in the, in the description of this video. So you can take a look at that. But I really think that that would be the better idea simply because so many systems have good SCART cables ready for them as is right now. And uh, the, again, with the component cables, you gotta wait for the production. Um, and then they aren't even like, you know, HD Retrovision, they made a great product, but I don't think that they're, you know, they were too uh, excited about being known as just a cable com company. I think they had more uh, things in mind. And so, that just made it so they didn't really, you know, they don't, they don't want to sit around and make component cables and service them all day, which I get another, I don't, I don't really think it's a good business decision. I think again that they should set something up where they could have some kind of streamlined or sell their product to someone else and let them sell it for us, but for them, because I, I just feel that like if this actually grows, they've got a product now, but what they're going to risk is um, being put out of the marketplace by a competitor. It's going to come in and steal all their business that they, you know, they made the product to begin with. Um, so, but anyway, that's just my two cents on that too. So, again, I would say that, you know, first choice, go with SCART and then get it converted to component. Um, and then that's, that's just the way you should do it if you can't get your hands on an RGB monitor right away. Because RGB monitors are tough, they're expensive, they are awesome, but... I think that if, if you're just looking for a great experience, people need to, people need to also take a look at some of these higher end uh, TVs, just regular CRT TVs that, you know, you don't have to always go with Sony. JVC made plenty of broadcast monitors. Panasonic was a top uh, brand of this time period. Um, there are a couple other brands. I actually have a Toshiba that's a 32 inch that is a very nice CRT that I'll feature in an upcoming video too. But I think that's enough of Demon's Crest, so let's go ahead back out to our main menu and go with our second game of the night. I'm only going to do two games tonight, and I'm hoping that I'm hoping they're coming through because I've tried to film this, I think, three or four times, and every time it comes out blurry or it just doesn't look as good. I'm sorry. I don't know that I'll ever be able to get to show the scan lines that great on just a, using just a camera and videotaping straight off the CRT, but we're gonna keep trying. Uh, maybe if you have any suggestions on, on um, how to make this work better, I, this is a, a, a Nikon camera. So um, anyway, if you have any suggestions, I will 
take them for sure. So let's get in here, our super ghouls and ghosts. This was another one that was, all right, there it is. That's a Capcom game that was recommended for this, and, and I love it. I, I grew up on this game. This was one of the games I used to just play nonstop. So I thought it was a good one. Um, and I can already tell just kind of like when I look back and forth between the screens, it's a lot brighter on the camera than it is on the CRT. I've had to turn the brightness down quite a bit. Every time it gets bright from the screen, you can see it kind of bleed through in the camera. So, it's a great game again. I'm not sure again how it looks. I'm going to go ahead and just publish this video. If you don't like it, please just let me know. Just if it, I mean, don't have to worry about hurting my feelings. I'm, I'm completely fine with people telling me whether this doesn't look good or if it's a waste of time. And I think I should just try to stick to other things. But I kind of thought that maybe somebody would like to see this, see how it looks, and uh, get an idea for what it looks like before, you know, making a commitment to either spending an extra large amount of money on a RGB monitor or just going for um, starting with something like this. Some other things to note that I still really like the reason I like these old TVs, so you can play anything on them, okay? And they have great sound systems built into them usually, stereo. But uh, So that's one thing, stereo sound system. And then you can play anything on them. So you can play uh, anything. I mean, anything that goes back to just having only RF support without modification. And some of those systems look good in RF. The original Atari systems actually looked quite good in RF. Uh, the Force and Six Switchers, the original ones. So, um, some of those things, and then some people don't even think that things work because they can't even test RF switches. I can't tell you how many RF consoles I get for five bucks because people just don't even know how to test them. They just sell them as is. So, that, and also, you know, I use Roku's, which is a streaming device, and I stream Netflix and other shows onto this because you can still get some of those classic shows that were meant for this 4.3 format and it looks great on composite, even just composite. It was made for that. So composite and 480i looks fantastic on this. I've done VCR, I've done streaming, I've even done converter boxes for cable. Uh, that's another good option. If you wanna just watch some TV on it in your shop, you wanna add a high def, you know, a high def receiving antenna and then get a converter box and convert that signal to whatever the TV takes. Oh boy, that's it. Okay. So that's a, the brutal part of this game, is having to get thrown back and start all the way at the beginning. Anyway, so I hope you can kind of see, I, I, I really do hope this came out, because again, I'm just going to publish this no matter what. So if it doesn't look good, let me know. If you can't see scan lines and uh, you like the effect, please let me know too. And if you do like it, give it a thumbs up and give me a game suggestion. I've got just about every gaming console that does analog and I'd be glad to throw it on here and try to find a game. At least, you know, give me a system and then give me five games and I can get two out of there. So I really love light gun games. I might try to do that on the next one. One of the systems with some light guns. I've got a big collection of light gun games. But... That's going to do it for today. I appreciate you watching this special with me and Retro Tech. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we got new content coming out. I will have a new video coming up later this week with the newest information on comics, what's hot, what's not, and what's a good read, what should you spec on. Um, but if you're not... But thanks again for watching this with us, and have a great evening.